Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one. It's February the 6th, 2017. Monday morning, the day after the Super Bowl. <laughs> Brady and the Patriots come back from a 25-point deficit to win. Now, some of you that know me know I was kind of pulling for the Patriots because number one, since most people hate Brady, I'm going to uh, just be contrary and root for him. And number two, he beat the Steelers. And those of you who know me know I hate the Pittsburgh Steelers more than any other team in sports. So anyway, past, present, future, trade what you see. Kind of hit me like a ton of bricks this morning, and this is something I've talked about. Um, we've got indicators, and we've got all these methods, and we've got just formulas and just so much stuff when it comes to trading. We sometimes forget about what we're really trying to do. I mean... You know, a lot of times we look at the past data and we're trying to predict the future and we're missing the present. Now, let me just show you a chart here. Now, once again, I'm on West Coast time and I got up, came down to the office ready for the 5 a.m. trades. And so I, I started looking at the screen about um this time right here 1445 server time and as you can see from here to here dollar canadian was going up i mean you you know you ask the 5 year old kid which way price is moving and they tell you up well i'm looking at this and i'm thinking you know I'm going to wait for a reversal. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, why? What is the reason you're waiting for a reversal if you can see prices going up? I mean, you don't need any indicators to see which way price is going. It's staring you right in front of the face. So why, oh why, are you waiting for price to stop going up and start to come down why why are you waiting for something in the f to happen in the future instead of just trading right here in the present moment and I was thinking about this because I was talking to some of my trading buddies and it's like why do we do this to ourselves I mean it's 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 right there staring us in the face I mean would you look at the, look at this move right here I, I, look at that 1.3043 look look where it hit it hit a high of 1.3134 1 <laughs> about 90 some pips right why was I waiting for this why was I waiting for this <laughs> when I could have had that <laughs> you just sometimes I have to laugh at myself I'm thinking, you know, I've got all these different methods, and as most of you know, I am a reversal trader, but the thing is, why am I confining myself or labeling myself? Because once I do that, it's like putting the blinders on, and then I'm only looking for certain things and missing certain things. It's like, it, you know, if you're looking for acorns, and, and you walk across and you pass up a diamond, I mean, really? <laughs> sometimes that's what we do when we trade I mean we're so concerned about some future event that we're waiting for we miss what's going on right now I mean it's just so obvious and the question though it's deeper it's a psychological question why do we do it have we been so fooled by the uh, traditional trading industry the traditional trading education that we need this stuff as opposed to just looking at the chart and seeing what, what what price is doing I mean sure indicators like the one I have here help you know there's the price 
And for the daily, it's 93 pips above the open, it's 24 pips off the high, and it's 104 pips above the low. I mean, sure, things like that, those type of gauges can help us, but I mean, as far as go, which way is price moving? Well, f from the open, it's moving up, but from the high, it's moving down. From the low, it's moving up. It's relative to what you're comparing it to. But what is price doing right in the moment? That's what we want to know. So you can see here, price came down, and now it's reversing. I mean, it came down all the way to 131.02. You know, that's a nice move off the high, you know, and if you're a red rat and you pick that up, you know, you had a nice little trade. But I mean, <laughs> this th this was the lion's share right here. That was the move. And I missed it <laughs> because I was looking for this. And like I said, I just have to laugh at myself. So I guess the, the takeaway is, you know, the past is the past. Don't be so concerned about the future and see if you can identify right here, right now, which way price is moving in the present moment. And I think maybe, just maybe, you might find a slight improvement in your profitability. Now, I got a couple other things I want to show you. I uh, Over the weekend, I was working on a couple of things. Um, you might notice some of these other indicators, but right here, I... I re-ramped or redesigned the uh, frequency distributions um, and basically this is kind of a reverse cumulative frequency distribution I had to look up and see if this was still called a frequency distribution or what type it was so I, I, I don't know if this is the, that's the exact name but um, I call it a reverse because what I'm looking for is you know how many Ranges were over one pip. Well, 100% of the time it was. How many was over zero pips? Over one pip. How many times over two pips? Oh, we had four times that weren't. And so you can see here, right here, where we get this big drop off, right around here, where it goes from 92 to 86. Okay? Right there. And then we get another drop off. So what this is telling me is, is that about 92% of the time, the range is going to be 6 pips or more. Okay? Now, so what? Well, what that tells me is, is if I allow for spread, then there's 4 pips left on most pairs. Most pairs somewhere around 2 pips spread that I trade. So how can I use that? to make money well I can see for example let's say we have an open here on a 15 bar and it goes down well let's just look at this one right here okay we've got an open and it went down three pips and then it came and then it had come back up so if it came back up it's already gone down three pips and it comes back up three pips then there's still three pips to be had right so taking a long entry would have given me, in this particular case, if I went long at the open 33 and the high 38, there's five pips. So that was actually, right now I believe we're looking at about an eight pip range, 38 to 30, yeah, it's an eight pip range. So you see here, 78% of the time, it's going to be eight or more pips. And so that's how you would use this. And you don't need to have this on a live. This is something you just I something that you look at on the weekend. And then you can pretty much either take notes or, or burn it in your brain. Saying, okay, I know if I'm trading the dollar yen that on the 15 minute, you know, probably good good amount of time that the range is going to be greater than six pips, nine out of ten times. So we'll, we'll know how to take, take pips that way. So that's, that's one new frequency uh, distribution indicator. And see right here we've got the average range and the current range. And so you can see here, there's the average. 
But if you shoot for average range, you're only going to get there 62% at a time. So that's why I like these frequency distributions to see where the sweet spot is. And by the way, a couple videos ago, I couldn't remember the fifth end, which is the median or the middle. Now, don't confuse that with high minus low type of middle or, or high plus low divided by two middle. No, that's a different one. The, the median is whichever price would occur right in the middle. So if you had 10 prices and, and you know the range could be anywhere from like 1 to 100, but if the price right there in the middle was 5, then that's the median. The price that's in, in other words, you line them up in order, and which, and you know, whichever one's in the middle, so like, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it would be the fourth one. So it doesn't matter, what, you know, you put the values in order. So that, that you're just picking a spot. There's no formula or computation. As opposed to if you take average, you add them all up and divide by seven. And then the mode, you will look to see which ones occur the most often. But anyway, I've got another uh, new toy to show you that I'm working on. And this is a f another frequency distribution indicator, but I tried to make it really flexible uh, for me and for the users. So you can see here, what it does is it takes this first condition, and you can specify this condition. I'll show you in a minute. It says, out of the 100 bars, how many bars opened above the pivot point? We're looking at um, D1 test over D1. I can explain that a little bit later or maybe in another video, but that's not important for this one. So we're, we're looking at 100 bars. So out of 100 bars, the last 100 bars, we had 54 opens above the pivot point. So from this point on, we're just going to look at these 54 bars. Now, did the low go below S1? It happened four times, or 7.41% of the time, okay? Now, close above the pivot, it only happened once. So what this is saying is, if you get an open above the pivot, and the low goes below S1, um, I really wouldn't expect the close to come back above the pivot, okay? And so how this indicator works and this name is just a temporary name i gotta think it because i was i was almost making it fixed but then i said no let me make this thing flexible why should i keep having to, to write it over and over and in this way i can have a lot more um bang for the buck so you see here we have all these different choices and i probably should put them in alphabetical order <laughs> uh, i might do that in the future um okay and then here basically we're just going to be above and below it's pretty binary and then once again we have all these choices so for example you can say hey what if it opens above the previous mid and the low is below the previous mid and we want to see how many times the close is below the previous mid. Actually, let's do it this way now. Close open above previous mid, but the high went above the previous mid, but it still closed below the previous mid. So here, open above it. No, it should be open below it. I must have hit the wrong button. Let's do open below previous mid. High above, but close below. So open below, 53 times out of 100. High above, 39 times, or 73%. Close below, 15 or 28%. So you can see here... whether or not you would want to take that trade based on these statistics so i'm working on this fellow traders and i'll keep you up to date in the meantime it's not what you trade it's how you trade it the rumpled one signing off gotta go back and drain the banks